So hello everyone. Before I start, uh, I would like to thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to present my work. So my talk was going to be out about self-testing within the stabilizer formalism. Uh, but when I was like proposing this talk, I was more optimistic about uh, uh, the number of results that I could present. But I think that 20 minutes is not enough. So I will concentrate only on one, <clears throat> which is published here in this paper together with Flavio Bakari, uh, Ivan Šupić, Jordi Tura, and Antonio Asin. And this is about our construction of certain class of bell inequalities for, uh, for uh, graph states. And uh, <clears throat> I will show uh, you how to use them to, for self-testing of those states. Okay, so let me start from some preliminaries. Okay, I have some problem with the computer. I can change the slide. Sometimes it's Zoom, Remix. So if you share once more, this should resolve the thing. Yeah, but this is what I'm doing now. Okay, maybe now. Okay, now it works. So let me consider a standard bell scenario in which I have n observers uh, sharing some quantum state, possibly entangled one, which I denote here by uh, psi. And let me assume that each party can perform some measurement on the share of this uh, of this state, and this yields some outcomes. And I denote the measurement choices by x's and uh, the outcomes by a's. For simplicity, we can assume that each party can choose to perform one of two measurements and each uh, measurement has two outcomes. Okay, and the correlations that, that are generated in this type of scenarios are described by, uh, by, by a collection of uh, conditional probability, of, of probability distributions, which are given here by the well-known Bones formula, where Psi is the state that I have in my, in my uh, that, that is being shared by the parties and M's are the measurement operators. And, in what follows, I will call this, this collections, correlations or uh, behavior. And now if this, uh, the collections can be written as a convex combination of uh, probability distributions that are product and each individual probability distribution is deterministic, meaning that it takes values zero or one. So for each measurement, there is one outcome that appears with probability one. Then we call such correlations classical or local. Well, classical because uh, we don't actually need uh, quantum states to quantum theory to to, uh, uh, to generate such correlations. Okay, we, we only need lambda, which is uh, also called shared randomness. But if we cannot uh, represent them in that way, we call them non-local. And the, the the set of local correlations forms a polytope, which is usually called Bell polytope. And it's a pro proper subset of the set of uh, all quantum correlations, which is depicted here by, by this, well, orange color. Okay, and the, a natural way to, to detect non-locality in, in such correlations is to use bell inequalities. Okay, they were like introduced by, by Bell. And uh, well, these are hyperplanes that constrain the, the local set. Uh, this set here, this, uh, this uh, yellow set. Okay, and here we have two examples of bell inequalities. Why one is attached to the facet of the set, the other one is here, okay? And mathematically, this uh, bell inequalities are, are given in this form where um, alpha are some numbers and P, A, X are this probability distribution uh, uh, I was talking about. And beta C is the maximal value of, the, of this expression, of this expression I over the local set, okay? And by beta Q, I will uh, denote the maximal quantum value of this inequality, which is the maximal value over the um, orange set, okay? And now if you take some correlations, you plug them into uh, such an inequality and you see that uh, the value exceeds beta C, then you know that, you, uh, that these correlations are no local, okay? And uh, the best known example of, uh, of such a Bell inequality is the CHSH Bell inequality. And it's uh, given here. It corresponds to the scenario where you have two parties, A and B. Each party performs two measurements or measures two observables. Each observable has two outcomes. 
Okay, and you can easily prove that the, this combination of four expectation values uh, cannot be larger than two for, for uh, local or classical correlations. Okay, and let me also remind you that, uh, that this inequality can be violated, and uh, the maximal quantum violation of this inequality is achieved by the maximal entangled state of two qubits, and also these measurements that I, uh, that I wrote here. Okay, so A just, uh, Alice just measures uh, the sigma Pauli matrices, and Bob has to measure the combinations of them. And why we are interested in non-locality? Well, this is because uh, non-locality is a resource for uh, certain device-independent applications. And device-independent here means that we can perform some tasks without trusting our devices that we use to perform those tasks. Okay, so we don't have to make any assumptions. We rely only on the, on the observed correlations. Okay, and one of the, well, most important examples, I think for me, is self-testing which is uh, certification of quantum states and measurements. And well, now I'm going to talk about self-testing. So uh, let me explain you the idea of device independent certification. So let me go back to the, to the best scenario that I described before. And let me assume that it's being performed on some state psi, but the parties that perform the, the Bell test do not know the state and they also don't know the uh, the measurements that are being performed on the, on the state. So they just have black boxes, okay? And the, they observe only correlations that are described by these probability distributions. Now the task is given this probability distribution to, or violation of some inequality to deduce the properties of the state psi and the, the measurements that they, they are performed on, on, on the state. Okay, so once more, so you, you perform, uh, the parties perform some bell test, they observe correlations, and from those correlations, they would like to learn uh, the properties of the state and the measurements that they perform on this state. And self-testing uh, represents a more precise question, which is to deduce that there exists a, a, a collection of uh, local unitary operations that if uh, applied to the state psi, which is, which is here, they can rotate it to, to, to some other state phi that they would like to certify, whose presence they would like to certify, certify in the device, times some auxiliary state, which is irrelevant from the point of view of, of, uh, of the observed correlations. Okay, so self-testing is like, I have a device, I would like to uh, certify that this device operates on, on, on the state phi, but in principle, it might operate on another state, and I would like to certify that this state phi is, uh, is uh, is present in my device. Okay, so this is this is what self testing is about. Okay, and this seems a very difficult task because uh, you, you are given a collection of numbers, and you would like to say something about quantum. Okay, so you'd like to find these unitary operations and, and and prove that when applied to the state, they give you the the state that uh, that you would like to uh, certify. Okay, but it turns out that in certain situations you can really do that. And let me go back to the example that I used before, which is the THSH Berlin inequality. So let me imagine that we observe maximal quantum violation of this inequality, which is two square root of two. And you can well quite easily prove that there, there exist unitary, uh, unitary operations, local unitary operations that when applied to the state on which you perform the, the Bell test, you can bring it to, to the maximally entangled state of two qubits times some other state. And also for the, for the observables, you can rotate them in such a way that you will get those observables that I showed you before. So for, for Alice, this would be X and Z, Pauli matrices. And for Bob, this will be combinations of uh, X and Z matrices times some, well, identity operator, which is irrelevant from the point of view of the observed correlations because it acts on the auxiliary state, okay? So, so by using the CHSH by inequality, by taking the, the observed correlations, plugging them into the CHSH Bernier inequality, you can really certify the presence of the maximally entangled state uh, in your device. Okay, so there has been some effort in uh, designing self testing methods for different uh, states, but most of them are like for bipartite states because this is the, the easiest uh, case. And uh, well, people have been trying to, to provide methods for the multipartite states. And here, uh, this question is uh, even more difficult because you, 
you, you not only want to, to have robust uh, methods, but also scalable, meaning that they should scale, let's say, well with the number of particles. Okay, so if the if you increase the number of particles in your device, the number of correlations doesn't grow rapidly. And uh, so we we have found such a such a method for the for the graph states, and this is what I'm going to present you now. So let me briefly describe the the graph states, uh, the definition of the graph states. So they correspond to graphs, okay? And the graph is a collection of vertices and edges connecting those vertices. So let me remind you that uh, let let, uh, let me assume that we have a graph, a connected one, so that doesn't have isolated uh, vertices. And to each vertex of the graph, I associate uh, an operator of this form here, which is a tensor product of x and z Pauli matrices. And at each position for each vertex, at each position I will have x. And at the other positions that are connected to, um, to the um, vertex i, I will have z operators. And at those positions that are not connected to vertex i, I have just identity operators, okay? So this is a, a very simple operator. And now the graph state, uh, a state, a multi-qubit multi state corresponding to, the, to this graph is a, a state that satisfies this relation for every uh, for every um, generator G, GI, okay? So this is the unique eigenstate with eigenvalue one of all these operators. And uh, this is uh, quite a large class of uh, multipartite states because it includes several important examples of, uh, of uh, entangled multipartite states, such as, for instance, the GEZ state or the absolutely maximally entangled state or the, which are, well, considered as a generalization of the maximally entangled state to the multipartite case, and also the cluster states. And it's also good to mention that all stabilizing states are equivalent to, to graph states uh, in terms of uh, local unitary operations. Okay, so now I can show you my our construction of, of the of the Berlin inequalities for, for those states. So let me consider again a, a graph. And let me enumerate the vertices of the graph in such a way that the first vertex has the largest neighborhood. So it has the largest amount of neighbors, okay? This I can always do is just random bang of the, of the vertices. And now to each generator or each stabilizing operator corresponding to the vertices of the graph, I associate another uh, operator in which X and Z Pauli matrices are replaced by uh, by the observables that I'm going to, to measure in my Bell experiment or the combinations of here. So at the first side, I have combinations of, of observables, whereas at the remaining sides, I have just the observables. And here, AI, uh, AJs are, well, as I said, arbitrary observables with two, um, two eigenvalues plus minus one. And now if I take the combination, linear combination of uh, expectation values of all these guys, I have N of them. So I will have N expectation values. If I sum them, I get a Bell expression, okay? This is my candidate for the for a good Bell inequality. And here I have to add this uh, this weight, this this number, which is the, the size of the neighborhood. Uh, well, for some, for simplicity, okay? Because it's easier to, to compute the classical value then. And let me give you an example of this construction for, for the tipless graph. So the tipless graph connected one would be like a graph consisting of two vertices. Uh, and uh, well, the stabilizing operators corresponding to this graph are given here. This is, this is just X times Z and Z times X operators. And they stabilize the maximally entangled state of two qubits, but in a different basis than, uh, than the one given here. And now to, to construct a Bell inequality for this maximally entangled state of two qubits, at the first side, I replace the X and Z operators by the combination of, uh, of the observables that the parties are going to, to measure, okay? A0 plus A1 and A0 minus A, A1. Whereas for Bob, I just substitute X and Z by B0 and B1, okay? In this way, I create uh, other two operators. And now if I sum the, if I take the combination, the linear combination of, of, uh, of expectation values uh, of these operators, I get directly the CHSH value inequality, okay? So this construction also recovers the, 
the CHSH uh, bar inequality. Okay, what are the properties of, of our uh, inequalities? So the most important thing is that the number of expectation values uh, that it uh, consists of is uh, linear in N, so it uh, scales very well with N. And let me uh, add here that the, there was a, another construction uh, prior to, to ours, which, uh, which also presents the uh, inequalities for, for the graph states, but there the scaling is exponential. And also it's very easy to compute the, the classical and the, uh, the quantum values of this inequalities. Okay, for the classical one, it's uh, very, the, the proof is very similar to the, to the one that you have to um, use for the CHSH bed inequality, whereas for the, for the maximal quantum uh, value, it's enough to, to write such a uh, sum of squares. So I take a shifted bell operator, BG is a bell operator corresponding to, the, to my bell inequality. I subtract it from, from this expression, and then I can prove that it can be decomposed as sum of squares of Hermitian operators, meaning that this, this operator that, that is on the left-hand side is uh, positive, okay? This means that for any state, the expectation value of the bell operator will be uh, upper bounded by beta q, okay? This is what you want. And then you can easily prove that if you take the, the graph state and this measurements written here, you, you, will, you will get beta Q. So you can maximally violate our inequality with, uh, with the graph state that, uh, for which uh, this inequality was constructed. So we have a construction of, of uh, a very simple construction of inequalities, which is scalable, okay? Meaning that uh, the number of expectation values to, to determine an experiment grows linearly with them. We can easily find the, the classical and the, the quantum value for, for any graph. And we can also prove that the, the maximal quantum value is achieved by the, by the corresponding graph states. Okay, so we have well inequalities maximally violated by, by all graph states. Okay, and now we can, well, the question is whether we can Ramik use them for self test. Ramik, you should be slowly. Finished, yes, okay. No? Just for the question is whether we can, okay. uh, well, use these inequalities for self testing. So I go back to, to my scenario. I, well, I perform measurements on, in, using my black boxes. And the question is whether the state that was inside uh, is unitarily equivalent to, to the graph state. Okay, and this is what we prove, okay? So if we, we can take our inequality, if you observe maximal violation of, of our inequality, we can deduce from, from this that there exists a set of uh, local unitary operations that when acted on the state that you have inside of this, uh, of this experiment, you can bring it to the to the graph state and some something some other state that is irrelevant for us, and also it's good to no, no mention that uh, this self-testing statements are robust. So well, here we have uh, the fidelity between the uh, for the GAZ state, the fidelity between the state that you uh, certify with the with the GAZ state, okay, in terms of the violation of our inequality, and you see that it scales and it's just a line, okay, so. You can afford some, some noises. Okay, let me summarize. So we have a good class of inequalities for the for the graph states. Okay, we are not the first one to, to introduce such inequalities, and there were previously some papers, but they well, we have some advantages. Okay, our construction some has some advantages over those constructions. And we are also not the first one to, to prove self-testing statements for the for the graph states. But our self-testing statements are based on scalable value inequalities, which is uh, which is good. Uh, so we can easily compute both classical and uh, maximal uh, quantum values. We can uh, well provide self-testing methods for those states, and also we can generalize this approach to to uh, entangled subspaces. And I wanted to talk about this, but uh, well, I don't have uh, enough time for that. So well, conclusions and outlook. So this, this construction can also be uh, used to provide bad inequalities for uh, graph states or arbitra of arbitrary uh, uh, local dimension, okay, prime local dimension. We can also use it for self-testing of the whole subspace, not, not, uh, not only of, of states. And recently we published a paper on that, well, more or less the same team. And the questions that you can, you can ask based on our work is, uh, whether you can, for every state, uh, whether you can provide uh, a self-testing method that uses the minimal information that is uh, necessary to, to certify the state. So 
In principle, it seems that our construction exploits this minimal information to, uh, to certify the graph states. So the question is whether for every substate you can construct such a self-testing protocol. Well, and also whether you can self-test any generally entangled subspace, okay? So why not subspaces if you can uh, certify states? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. So we started with some delay, but let's take a couple of questions. Anything from the floor? There's one on the chat. Okay, let me then read the one, or maybe Maciek, would you like to ask the question yourself? Uh, Maciek, okay, so, it, so uh, maybe I read it. No, no, I'm that? here. I'm here. We know, okay. we wait for your... No, no, I'm in the room message. because I have a Zoom in the moment. No, so the question that I have is if I have a fixed well inequality and I don't violate it maximally, then I would say that I can only determine the state that is there with certain precision or fidelity or something like mm -hmm. that. Can you comment about this trade-off? Yeah, so we have tried to... Okay. Okay, it doesn't work again. So we we have tried to to find such uh, robust statements for the for some states like the GAZ state. Okay, I'm sorry, but I have again the same problem. I cannot move to the to the other slide. But Maciek, what I can tell you is that we we try to find that that uh, this lines uh, relating fidelity of the uh, certified state with with the uh, with the state that we want to certify. Okay. And the, the violation, and they, they were pretty good. I mean, they were just lines, okay? So you can, you can afford some noises. So you can still mm -hmm. say something, even if you don't observe the maximal quantum violation, you can still be able, uh, you're still able to say something about the state that you, that you have in the experiment. Okay, and this is all in I'm the afraid. PRL or? Yes, it's in the PRL. I'm afraid Maciek and Remy, you need to take it to the coffee session. Given that Maciek is not coming to the lecture as well, you can do it. And I need to pass the microphone to Michał Szmaniec because we are running over time. But let us thank Remy once more for a nice talk. Thank you.